Major funding for Video Log Listens was provided by the Ralph M. Parsons Foundation. Now we're standing here, I'm with Gary Cantor, who owns Cantor's. Actually, your family's been part of this place forever. Uh, over 60 years in Los Angeles. We started on uh, Brooklyn Avenue in East L.A. It was 10 cents a sandwich, 1931. And how long have you been here on Fairfax? Uh, we moved on Fairfax in 48, and we've been in this location here since 1953. Now, you were just pointing out that you've just moved into the pasta yeah. business, and I didn't know that was... Yeah, well, you know what, it's, uh, these days people are eating healthy, and we sell <laughs> three, 400 pounds of pasta a week, and it's, it's an excellent uh, seller. We've got a pesto, a marinara, and a cheese-filled tortellini. Uh -huh. So it's really... So you're branching out. It's not just a traditional Jewish deli anymore. You can come in, you can get lox, we have delicious corned beef, we pickle our own corned beef, we have the best pastrami in the country. Tell me about Fairfax Boulevard, because that's kind of where we are today. How has this place changed uh, in the last 20 years? Well, we used to have a lot of uh, probably uh, more entertainment people and celebrities in the daytime, and now uh, in the daytime there's a lot of more different clientele attorneys, and at nighttime we get a lot of the rock and rollers, uh, rock and roll stars, and uh, it's a, from the daytime, it's now nighttime. Nighttime is just, uh, it's a madhouse here, just seven nights a week. But what about Fairfax uh, I itself? Has the character of the neighborhood changed? Is uh, it's a little different. It's a little bit, uh, you know, it's still, I think it's the last Jewish section left, and, and it has changed. I mean, uh, in the daytime, it's a little bit, uh, a lot of Jewish, and towards nighttime, you get a younger crowd, and it's, it's definitely... It's still Fairfax, but it is it's it it has changed in the last 20 years. And when you say changed, you mean it's really hard to sum it up. I think years ago, it used to be uh, a lot of elderly Jewish people, and it was a little. Well, there's loose. still a lot of elderly Jewish people around. Yeah, here. but for some reason, it was just. I remember as a kid. I'm 33, so as a kid growing up, I remember you know they'd give you a piece of chewing gum or or whatever. Now it's just a little bit. Uh, it's a little different. You like this business? Yeah, it's a good business. I like meeting the people. I'm not very good with complaints. If somebody comes complaining, I say, lady, whatever, here, here's your money back, and I don't, I don't want to get into it, but we serve about 20,000 people a week, and out of those 20,000 people, you get four or five complaints, and whatever it is, just give them their money back and make them happy. What do they complain about? I oh hate to bring God. it up. They, they, you know, the bagel, they tell you about, you know, they buy the bagels in and they leave it in their ice box for three weeks and they, you know they want their four bagels back or whatever it is or just give them the <laughs> money whatever what, whatever it is the whole economy in america right now is uh very wow. i was just in malibu there was nobody there it's uh, empty so i figured thank god i still have uh, 130 employees here and we're still uh so making are a living you feeling the crunch here we're probably off about seven eight percent and how does that affect uh, listen, it affects it affects your profit. I mean, there's 130 employees, and uh, you have to pay them every week. So hopefully, uh, you know, we'll we'll be okay. But you're not sure. Well, listen, worst comes to worst. Instead of 130 employees, you only have 100. What are you going to do? Yeah. I don't run the country. Now Gary is going to give you a tour. This is the first time I've ever been back behind the counter. Yeah. These are Ruggalos miniature danishes. We bake them fresh on the premises every day. They make about 100 pounds. And uh, these are the different cheesecakes and stuff. And now, I mean, now I, you know, I have a feeling I can just tell by looking. <laughs> this lady back here is in charge. She's in charge. Now, I, I mean, knew that. Would you like to say? Uh, I knew that. I could tell you were in charge. <laughs> What do you want me to say? <laughs> I'm in Oh, the bakery business. We have a nice staff. We are selling, you know, everyday fresh. Uh huh. What is that you got there? This is a French bread. Uh huh. Yeah, it's now, very nice. Now, do you nice make it or do you just sell it? No, no. We bake them upstairs. We have the bakery and we sell them. Look we at all this. it. This and this is, is egg bread. Adela is very fresh in the twist bread. 
And we have all kinds of Danish, all kinds of miniatures, cookies. Now, are your customers regular customers? Do you know a lot of them? Oh, lots of customers, but we know they're coming very every day. And we have customers that from far away, they're coming. They're, li very, they're liking our uh, merchandise. Now, when you say they come from far away, did they used to live here in the Fairfax area no. and they moved away and they just yeah, keep coming they're, back? They're saying they're coming from San Diego, they're coming from uh, San Francisco, they like our bread. Really? Yeah. yeah. Wow. While we ask them for money, they're coming, they say they're coming from the from far away. So Look at this. Yes, Russian, Russian coffee cake. Still, cake. Still warm. Oh, but, wow. Yes. Now, how long have you worked here? I work here but a long time. I don't come the year, and I think it's about 25 years. I'm 25 working. years? Yeah. Now, do you think that you're going to retire sometime soon? Oh, yes, soon? yes, yes, yes. And then what are you going to do after you retire? <laughs> but I'm going to retire. I'm going to, to enjoy my uh, retirement. Well, don't you think you're going to get bored? You're used to being for, down here around for this, people? I'm, for this, I'm coming to work. I don't like to sit home. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah I li you have to be healthy and that's it in work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So now, my point is then, if you retire, yeah. You're going to be sitting at home. You're going to be bored. You're no, going to be I'm watching going, soap operas. I'm not going. Yeah, I'm watching soap operas after work. <laughs> but you don't think you'll be bored when you no, retire? No, I like, uh, I, for this I'm working. Well, I don't want to be, be bored. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You have any date that you're going to retire? Have you set that yet? No. I have to be healthy. You ask the other girls what they're going to do. <laughs> I never thought she'd run out of things she to makes say. makes everything fresh. If it's not fresh... She doesn't serve it. You see, when it's not fresh, it's no business. <laughs> so you have a lot of pride in your work here. Oh, yeah. oh yes. I like very much. And, and here comes a lady. And they're very good buses. Now, very good. how long have you been working here? About two and a half years. Oh, so you're the new kid on the block. Yeah, not, <laughs> no, not really. Some, somebody else work less than I am. Really? Yeah. So do you think you're going to stay here as long as she has for 25 years? I hope. I hope so. No, not 25 years. No. <laughs> I will be too old. I'm going to tell you, I like to work another 25 years and be healthy. Well, you could be. Yeah. And be healthy. You never know. Yeah. How long have you been here? Should I count the years? Yeah. It's about 20, 22. Now, do you live right here in the neighborhood? Yeah. So you walk to work every day? I take the bus. Now, do you feel safe? Have you ever had any problems? You're never safe. No, I am, don't feel always safe. Really? No. no. So but how, I take a chance. It's okay. Do you have friends who have been mugged or been had problems? Uh, twice and twice robbed the, the house. <laughs> but you stay, don't stay in the house. You try again to go out. Really? Really. So I'm okay. So wait a minute. You've been mugged in your house or you have friends? I, on the street twice, and in the house too. You? Me. Really? It's all right. They were looking for something. What, did they grab your money? They, you grabbed they grab your purse? They my money on the street, sure. Did you chase after them and yell at them? That's why I was stupid. <laughs> I bet you chased them, didn't you? Yelling all the way. Yeah, it's okay. It's in style. So that doesn't bother you? That doesn't make you... It doesn't keep me in the house. No. I am the type. Try again. It's so okay. you're an optimist? Yeah, not a pessimist. I can tell you hadn't <laughs> stopped smiling all day. <laughs> so, do that see, but no. <laughs> let's see what we got going over here. Okay, one more. Okay. Now here's, let's let this... Oh, yeah, they are gone. Here we got... She's on lunch. You talk to this girl. Well, no. To this girl. To this girl. We got a whole bunch of people here. <laughs> I tell you, this is a crowded area back in here. Now, what are you all here to buy? I ordered a carrot cake. Oh. A carrot cake? Carrot cake. And what are you getting? Oh, you're, just getting you're getting Hollywood Those bakery. It's a Hollywood bakery. A what? A Hollywood bakery order. Oh. You see, another bakery comes here and buy from us. You mean you're taking this to a bakery? I don't fix with her. He's the one taking. <laughs> That's amazing. And so you're taking something to a bakery and then they're going to say that they baked it. No, they're not. The Kentus baked it. Uh huh. The Kentus is baked it. They're coming in, the, uh, they they're buying from it. For 75 or 80 and they sell it for a buck 50. It's a really? good business. Wow. Okay. Okay, <laughs> okay, there it goes out to the bakery right now. They're going to mark it up and sell it. That's pretty good. Now, what are you here buying? 
Puppy seed strudel. Strudel. <laughs> wow, they this got good the strudel favorite. here. It's my favorite. It's my favorite. Thank God for this. So the business is holding up pretty good. Sure. To see, we keep on smiling, selling. Now, is smiling important to selling? Not for everybody. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you have some sour puss too. They're sour pusses? Not in this place. No, we don't let them in. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this. Is that a good sandwich or what? Those are beautiful. This is a Fairfax, this is a Fairfax, and this is a Brooklyn corned beef. And these are just our regular standard sandwiches, but uh, I guarantee you got a half a pound of meat there in, in the sandwiches. Wow. And it's reasonable. A deli sandwich is about $6.10, and we keep it reasonable because it's the Fairfax area. A lot of these places in Sensory Chitty charge eight ninety five for the same sandwich. Now. Has the deli business suffered any because everybody's on this health kick about not eating fat, not eating red meat? You know what? We it has, it has. They don't eat as much corned beef as they used to, but we sell a lot of turkey. We sell, we we roast uh, every day three, four hundred pounds of fresh turkey, and uh, we roast them the old-fashioned way in the ovens. None of this turkey roll stuff or fake or pressed. It's real, honest to goodness turkey. We break them down and we uh, we serve them. Now you know I've been in here now. How long? I've been got here about, about half, hour, half ago. hour. Right. You haven't stopped talking about can about your sandwiches. About I mean the man is selling this. You are selling. Well, you know what? I, it's you got to understand to be in business. They, there was a thing from 1934 that came out in the Los Angeles Times two weeks ago. And out of the five restaurants that were around in 1934, we're one of the five last restaurants in. California, and, and it was Cantor's, it was, uh, I believe, Felipe's, it was Tay's on Sunset, and there was another restaurant on Alvera Street, and then uh, in Hollywood there they had uh, Mousson Frank. And that was the last five restaurants that were recommended to go to in 1934, so we, we somehow we've made it. Yeah. Here's this lady, she's been yelling at us from the background. Yes, ma'am? How did you know that? We've been here since Boyle Heights, and Boyle Heights area. They had Cantor's restaurant there too. Now they're here about 30, 35 years. You hear about 35 years? You've been coming here how many years? About 35 years now. Really? I'm here since 52. Now you're just drinking coffee no, though. No, I ate already. Oh, you've already eaten? I had my bagel and coffee. <laughs> <laughs> now it's do you come? It's delicious here. It's delicious. Why do you? Very friendly, everybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you live in the neighborhood? Oh, of course. Tell me a little bit about this neighborhood. Has it no, changed? Well, it changed a little bit, but it's still good neighborhood. It's the, um, everybody's friendly here, yeah, especially when you come into Cantor's. Everybody knows each other here, yeah, so it's pretty nice. Do you get, do you mind if I sit down no, here with you? you got room enough. Oh, sure. I'm too heavy now. Do you get the sense that no that this is like a real neighborhood, even oh, though it's it in a big city? But I think people would go crazy if there was no Cantor here. That's right, that's right. But I mean the neighborhood itself, the idea, you know, lots of times when people talk about L.A., they're talking about three or four million people well, and it's spread uh, out all over the oh place. Oh yeah, it is all spread out, it's true. But uh, everybody knows Cantor's. People come from all over the country, all over the country, I really mean it. Mm -hmm. Not that I'm getting anything here, but really mean it all over the country. They really come well, here. Well, you should get a discount now after talking like oh, this. Uh, <laughs> do you? I, do you? I'm a regular customer here. Do you have? Do you? Well, you're living on Social Security. Yes, sir. Now, does that cause a problem for you? Are you you mm, balancing really. your books pretty tightly? Why, there? sure. We all have to do with people that live on Social Security. So when you come in and you look at the menu, it makes a difference to you. I don't look at no menu. I know what I want when I come in here. <laughs> I have my bagel and coffee. That's it. Unless I go crazy once in a while. And do what? Oh, I have my... big New Yorker, uh, bagel and cream cheese. Box, bagel, cream cheese. That's what I love. Mm -hmm. And a pickle. And a pickle. <laughs> and my olive. But he fooled me today. No olives today. The doctor said you got to watch the blood pressure, so only you oh. What? <laughs> what is this? The doctor said she's got to watch her blood pressure, so uh, she gets an olive once a week on Sundays. She gets so an olive. So you keep up with your customers we that much? We, we do, because we, it's, uh, without the customers, we wouldn't be here. So yeah. we try to father, take care of them. His what? father and mother, two nice people, very nice, especially his father. He sees me, comes over, gives me my two olives. 
Yeah, I love olives too. Now we've got a, a lady with her little baby here. Yes, we do. You're mm -hmm. starting him off young at Cantor's. Yes, this is his first visit. Now, do you live in the neighborhood? No, we live in San Gabriel, actually. So why, what brings you into Fairfax? Well, this is a tra traditional place to come and eat, and we thought we'd meet up here for lunch and go shopping on Melrose afterwards. You've got an accent. Yes, I'm from England. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you lived in uh, L.A.? About 12 years. What do you think about this town now? What, what kind of questions do your friends back in England ask you about L.A. now? Well, they think it's pretty crazy here, you know. And it took me an hour to get here, actually, so I want to unwind, I want to sit down. And you mean the traffic itself? Yeah, it's really bad. Now, when, when you say they think it's crazy because of the riots, because of the traffic, because of the earthquakes? I think, the tra I think a combination of things. But it's still a fun place to be. But London is... Is, is fun too. Mm -hmm. That's where I'm from. Do you do you find yourself defending LA a lot to your friends or do you yes, bad do. mouth it yourself? No, I don't bad mouth it. I do defend it a lot. It has its good points, you know. Like? Real good points. Well, um, the beaches, the weather, the people are really friendly. What can I say? Mm -hmm. It's a fun place to be. Do you think you'll stay here if and bring up your... Uh... I think we will. So you're yeah. gonna stay? Yeah. Now you're standing in line here. What are you what am I getting doing here today? today? I'm bringing a care package up to Oregon uh, for a friend's mother who used to live in the neighborhood and um, can't get these items any longer. Now why did your friend's mother leave the neighborhood? She got married. And moved off to Oregon. And moved off to Oregon <laughs> and I wish I could join her. Now, what do you mean by that? Um, I heard you asking the questions, and I was born and raised in L.A. I'm fifth generation Californian, and there are a lot of things that L.A. offers that you can't find elsewhere, but I'm tired of the congestion, the high prices, and the pollution. Really? Yes. So what are you going to do about it? You know what? I don't know. I feel kind of stuck. Why are you stuck? Because Why don't you just load up and get out? Because I don't know what I would do elsewhere to make the kind of living that I'm making here. But unfortunately, what I'm making here, if I made the same money here somewhere else, I would live like a king. But in Los Angeles, I'm not below the poverty level, but I'll never own a house unless I get married. Mm -hmm. So you really do face a dilemma. Do a lot of your friends, is this what you talk about when you get together with them a lot? Other um, friends have the same? Yes. Um, I don't know that we talk about it a lot, but certainly it's come up, and it is an issue. And what is this for? <laughs> <laughs> well, this is for a television program on KCET. We're just going out and talking with people. Okay. And you certainly volunteered your <laughs> opinions very quickly here. <laughs> I mean, you've got some strong opinions. I do. You also sound pretty frustrated to me. You're kind of torn. I, um, if I was allowed myself to think about it, yes, I could be very frustrated. And there were times that I was very frustrated. Um, now I've just decided to turn my attention to things that please me, and I'm just kind of going along with the yeah. flow. Mm -hmm. Well, I hope it all works out. Thank you. This For the, the meantime, nice, you're... Nicest city in the whole world. <laughs> what? Los Angeles. So you have good things to say about L.A.? Sure. You think she should stay here? I would love to. Because <laughs> she's thinking maybe about leaving. <laughs> she wants you to stay. Okay. <laughs> can you talk and work the cash register at the oh, same time? Sure, I can talk and work the register and answer the phone and make charges all at the same time. I'm just curious what your friends in Mississippi think about you living here in Los Angeles. They think Why I'm, are you laughing? Because I'm from North Carolina. <laughs> and what do your friends in North Carolina think about you living in L.A.? Uh, they're excited, but it's been a real, uh, it's been about two months now. It's been a brief visit, right? Oh, so for you've so just been here for two months? Two months, yes, sir. And you've had a lot happen in this city since you got here. I've got the 27, I'm sorry. Oh, all right. Uh, what's that? A lot had a lot happen in this city. It's been a new experience, yeah. We actually missed the riots by a couple weeks, but um, just got out of school, moved out here to pursue some dreams, and we're living for free with a friend of mine's uncle, so it's kind of... Now, what do you mean pursue some dreams? What kind of dreams? Uh, trying to get into the old uh, 
movie industry, as a matter of fact. Really? So that's the, that's the big the big hope, and we're working actually. Got found jobs. They're brief, but uh, they're jobs nonetheless. What kind of job? Just basically production assistant type work. Um, just running errands and uh, doing whatever needs to be done. Doing the the you know grip work and stuff like that. Just did learning. You, it's did pretty... you know anybody when you came out here? I knew uh, two people, and uh, they've really been very gracious. As a matter of fact, a lot of people that I've met have really been uh, really gracious in terms of saying, you know, here's a kid coming out of college and. Everybody came out here trying to start something, so that's kind of... So you still think, people still think in North Carolina of L.A. as the place to come to pursue dreams? Well, from what I understand, North Carolina, I believe, uh, and this can be checked out, is like the third, uh, the third state where I guess the most movies are produced right now behind California and New York. Um, but, uh, but I guess this is the place to be in terms of the... Uh, I guess the center of attention, mm -hmm. and so that's that's why I'm here. Are you going to stay here, or have you put a time limit on well, it I'm, before uh, you go back to North Carolina? I moved or? out here with a friend, and we're living with his uncle, like I said, um, so for free. So that's a big reason we moved out here, and we're staying a year. But if the jobs continue, then we're we'll stay on. So. So you're optimistic. Oh, very. Yeah. I mean, I've been out here two months. People are amazed that I'm 23 years old and have work after just moving out here. It's amazing that. A lot of the people in the industry are not even from California. You know, move here to find work. And do you think it was your attitude that helped you get the job? Because I mean, there are a lot of people out there <laughs> looking for work, and yet you came out here and found a job. Um, right away. I probably would not have come out here if I didn't have the kind the kind of contacts that I had. Uh, people that you know said, you know, come on out. We know a lot of people. It's a it's a big town, but the industry is a small industry. I mean, everybody's so integrated. And uh, I felt I felt really good about that. They said, you know, we know some people. We'll introduce you, and as long as you know. Put on a good face and talk a good game, then uh, people will certainly give you a listen. So, so you're talking a good game? Well, no, I mean it's not really. It's not really talk. It's not really about talking a good game. It's just you know showing people that you're in, you're enthusiastic, you're willing to learn, and uh, and willing to work, and willing to work hard at whatever uh, within reason. So, so you're not worrying about how much you get paid, just the fact that you have a job. That's right, uh, and that's the big the big plus for me and for and for my friend. As a matter of fact, he's back in North Carolina. Uh, I think we're both. We get homesick because you know we left so much in terms of all our family and friends are all there. But um, it's basically a, a fun town. Um, but if you have a job, it certainly makes it a lot more fun. So, well, good luck. Well, thank we'll you very much. We'll be looking for I your name it. on the credits I, I hope of the be screen there someday. But I appreciate talking to you. Thanks. Yeah. Wow, that was that kind of came out of the blue there. The cashier's from Mississippi and he's from North Carolina and they're both working in L.A. This is amazing. We came, we were originally going to hang out for the day on Fairfax. We walked in here, this was our first stop, and we have talked to enough people right <laughs> here. We don't have to leave here. This is the story right here. So that's why I love working here. I'm here eight, ten hours a day, and I love it. And uh, it's a landmark, and uh, you can really meet all walks of life in here from Orange County, from New Jersey anywhere from Europe, from France, you just come here, especially on the weekends. I mean, you're here Friday. You come here Saturday or Sunday, wild. It's a wild mix. And if you ever have nothing to do, in the middle of the night, you come here 1, 2 in the morning, you won't believe it. See, I knew you'd end up by promoting canners again. <laughs> now, can I tell you something? Our bar, it's a known thing that Jews don't drink. Okay, so our bar never, we never, I mean, if we took in 300, we were doing good. Now, you come here on Tuesday nights or Friday nights, it's just tremendous. There's young kids in the bar. It's it's. Uh, but they're I'm, not Jewish. I'm not. They're not Jewish. I'm not plugging the bar. But it's just <laughs> incredible what my younger brother Mark has uh, has done to uh, promote uh, the bar business. There's rock and roll people, and it's, all right, uh, all right, enough already. We've had a great time. A nice meeting you, and I just want you to know that uh, we we do have the best catering, and uh, if you look up there, it'll, it'll it says it all in a, in a mouthful. <laughs> I knew you'd end the program. <laughs> Literally, the last word spoken. <laughs> Listen, promoting I, canners. I God, I've wa been watching your show for years. Whenever I'm up at night or in the daytime, whenever you're always on and you do great work. And, and, and uh, when you called on the phone, I knew right away it was you. Hey, then here she goes. <laughs> Goodbye. It's about time. Just don't eat those olives, okay? Yeah, I like olives. I got some sandwiches too. I want to give just, I'm giving you the, let me tell you something. The pastas I make myself. Uh -huh. My own recipe and I make them all three fresh today. And I'm going to give you some potato salad, a corned beef, and some pastrami. I'm going to get them for you right now. No, talk to them. Talk to them. Talk to them. What you talk about? What you talk about? There's enough talking.
I got to get my lox sandwich better. Nope. Okay, take care. Bye. Uh, and you sure you're on 28? Yeah. Okay, okay. Uh -uh. She's cute. She's cute. That blondie is cute. She's a nice girl. Tell them to give you some Danish butter. Delicious. Look at her. Jewish, Danish. The Jewish area, where they want. All the Yidden. Yidden. And this is he's like, what are you so hysterical about with me? Huel, I have lived in this neighborhood for 45 years. Really? Never moved out of this area. Now, a lot of people have. Yes, a lot of people have, and probably there are good reasons for it. However, for me, coming from New York, the Bronx, when I arrived in Los Angeles, this was heaven. Major funding for Video Log Listens was provided by the Ralph M. Parsons Foundation.